Hi guys, good night. My name is Ali Shawes and I'm the Guild Secretary. Omolora, who is hosting this session, actually got kicked out of the room because they know the Zoom room only allows 100. So I'm trying to let her back in now. So if I kick out one of you guys, I'm not doing it on purpose. I'm doing it so I can get Omolora back in so she can start the stream because we have the YouTube up and ready, but I need to get Omolora back into the room. Right, greetings, massive and wannabe masses. <laughs> um, so sorry about the wait, guys. We were experiencing some technical difficulties, but I'm proud to say that things are sorted. Um, the YouTube is up. The link is being sent now. Um, and you can send it with your friends and your peers, all right? So let me just... Um, let me see what can be done here. All righty. And once again, I'm going to send the link, um, to the YouTube. The you, oh, I have the YouTube link. <laughs> let me just look. I have the YouTube link. So I'm going to just copy the YouTube link and send in the chat. Um, uh, give me a minute. I'm sending it in the chat. God do me can't afford for you to be kicked off. Um okay, so it's happening now. Share, copy link. Sorry, and then let me now send the link and I'm gonna send the link where. So give me like five seconds so I can no. Sorry guys. Am I off one?
Hold on, guys. Book report loading. All righty. So as the link is being sent, um, yeah, guys. So once again, I have to apologize about what happened earlier. It was really and truly not the intention, but we were, you know, we had a little bit of difficulties, but we're back on track now. We're moving hard. We're moving right. We're moving strong. We're going to get the grades. We're going to get it all. We're going to do what needs to be done. And <laughs> we're going to do what needs to be done. And... All right, so I'm ready now. I'm ready like I said, you know, no joy. So let me see. I, I, I'm, I'm the type that I'm going to watch and see what's happening to ensure that. Let them know, especially those who want to get access to the, um, especially those who want to get access to the, the Zoom, that the Zoom facilitates 100 Whoever is not facilitated in the hundred, my bad. Whoever is not facilitated in the hundred can go on YouTube because I will look at both YouTube and sorry, wait, not the link, my bad. I will go on both YouTube and Zoom. I'll go back and forth. And forth. I'm hearing myself or I'm hearing somebody in the background. Do me a favor, please mute your mic. Once you've entered into the session, I'm asking you please to just mute your mic. There is the YouTube link. Um, let me see if I can accept anybody else in the meeting. And we move. Um, ooh, admit all. How are we feeling tonight, guys? How we feel about the book report? Um, if you're hearing me on YouTube, please indicate by raising your hand so I know that you're there and that you are ready like everybody else. So once you're on YouTube, just indicate by raising your hands. YouTube has a 10 second delay, so I need to know that they're there with us too, to continue. I know that we're feeling stressed about the book report. I know that we're feeling a little bit tired. We know so we feel like it's a life rough and we're just tired of it and we want to quit. But to be very honest, guys, this is actually a very fun part of your Caribbean civilization course. The only reason why we're in this dilemma is because we, I'm gonna be very honest about it. We're university students and at times mm -hmm. we can be lackadaisical. Um, at times we can feel overwhelmed. And so we look at a particular project and say to ourselves that, listen, it's very hard. But the situation is not that it's very hard. It's just that they've given us a lot of time to work with. So, um, and I'm saying that because I do
I'm so sorry. I don't know what's happening with my Wi-Fi. It's I'm on campus, so um, you can figure. You can just it saves it. It saves it all. But all right, guys. Um, we're going. We're going. We're going. We're going. We now have no sort of problems for the rest of the night. I want. I want. I want to be alone. We go to hang out, and that was it. All right, guys. So I'm gonna tell you, like I was saying, as university students, you know, we have a whole lot on our hands and so when you're giving us a course when you're giving two months in advance two months in advance to do um a carb save book report two months in advance you know you are going to say to yourself you're going to find all sorts of problems to not all sorts of reasons to not start the carb save book report all sorts of reasons to not start the carb save book report just because you have the time to not start it right and then when it winds down to one month or two weeks until deadline they start looking and say jesus this is a whole lot of work for me do it's a whole lot of what kind of question this i'm gonna answer the question and ask me i'm gonna analyze the question and right now this teacher has stressed me out because we don't need to do all of this we just learn a little bit of social studies that's all we are two weeks in and then a couple of days before we are forced to do the, ex the, the, the the essay and so what happens is that we're now open-minded to learn Roxanne Roxanne mute, mute your mic for me please Roxanne so we're open to learn just because we are now left with no choice whatsoever we say to ourselves we're open to learn you understand me? And you know, you might say, hmm, the girl that, see, see Kimberly just say, I'm pulling me a whole our shirt. But it's true because that is how I am as well. I am given the time to do the work, but I'm not going to do it become a hard time. You understand me? And when it winds down, I'm now open to learn. And so you're now at a situation two days before the book report where the only thing you've done so far is just read, read the book. And I want, and I hope that YouTube is hearing Right, I think YouTube is her hearing. Beautiful, they're beautiful. And I want you to be honest with me because guess what? This is a safe space. And not only is this a safe space, is everybody getting a degree? Nobody not special now, nobody. Nobody now gonna get no, regardless of what grade we get right now, all we're aiming to do is pass this course. And so we're trying to help each other to pass this course. That's what this particular session is for. I cannot tell you what all the other sessions you're seeing being advertised is about, but this session is to help each other to ensure that we pass this part of the course. You understand me? And so I'm gonna ask you a real honest question and I want some real honest answers. Be very honest with me. Did Roxanne mute her mic? Why is Roxanne still on my picture? Why is not me and Roxanne? Hold on. Is Roxanne not prettier than me? Me prettier than Roxanne? Me for the pande, um, something. I chop me a chop them and Roxanne, me know. I realize you muted your mic. All right, so, but Roxanne now, come on from the screen now. All right, so let's go guys. So here we are. That's okay, Roxanne, that's okay. So here we are now, and I want I wanted honest, I want some honest answers, real and dirty. How many of you have not read the book in the fullest? You have not finished the book. You are just probably in chapter three. If you read so far, by raise of hand in both the Zoom chat and the YouTube, and those in YouTube just send me, how many of you have not started or have not completed the book? God, just simple. No, I know we are big people. You understand me? Nobody can beat you if you don't read the book. I just want to know. And it's a genuine question because I know where I'm going with this. Onika is halfway through chapter seven. I'm seeing 10 persons so far, 11. You haven't finished the book, 12. I'm seeing, I'm seeing persons in YouTube as well saying me. So all right then, based on what I'm looking at, at least half of us right now have not finished the book. And that's fine. That's I'm fine. Asking a next question. So lower your hands because I'm asking a next question. How many of you have just started the book, either today or yesterday? Between today and yesterday, you just started the book. Hey, problem. I'm, I'm hearing you, Tawaya, but I don't know if you're speaking to me or your mic is just unmuted. Um, and so you're saying something you're not supposed to be saying. Um, let me go check and see if I've sent the link to Talia. Yes, yes. 
Let me just write. I'm reading now because guess what? Guess why you know? Hold up. Hold up. I'm watching because guess what? Nobody now, nobody can hello, nobody can disrespect nobody right now. You know, if you did not read the book, you just did not read the book. So I'm seeing it that a lot of us have not started the book as well. We just started the book yesterday. Guess what? I just started the book day before yesterday. I, the person who is going through this with you, just started the book day before yesterday. But the beauty about it is, I am up, I'm, and I'm not going to say I'm, I'm at a level that is higher than you or anything, but I've done this book report session quite enough to know that I personally, I don't need to read the book, but I personally don't need to read the book to know what is actually expected of you. So I have done my skimming, scamming, reading, getting, and I've gotten what I needed. And now it's up to us as a team to work through it. I did this course um, five, six semesters ago, five, because two in lower. So five semesters ago, I did this course, right? The deadline was a Friday, just like this deadline. And if you watch my YouTube, you'll probably hear this story, but I will say it again. My deadline was a Friday. And you know why I'm saying all of this? More everybody forgetting that the attitude to understand, say, no, it's not the time for us to fret because time is against us, everything. That time they pass a week ago. So all we have to do right now is just rock we head together and get the book report out of the way to ensure that we have a grasp of what is expected of us. I did this book report five semesters ago. I feel like many need to turn on the camera, but I'm afraid they me out. But I did this book report um, five, five semesters ago. The day when the book report was due, I just started reading the book. Just. The book report was due, I think, 11 o'clock Eastern time. So it was 10 p.m. When everybody was submitting their group work, I did not start the book. I'm going to finish a book, I mean. I'm going to finish a book. And my daddy and I said, God, what am I going to do? I'm going to die. I'm going to feel a course here and that's it for the end of the world. But then I said to myself, listen, you are done gone bad. you are done mash it up for yourself. Sit down and read the book. I'm going to read the book one time. I'm spending whole night in the library. I'm going to just read the book. And I said, no, man, that book, you have a buzz. Because I'm reading the book. And I understood after I read and I read and I started getting to understand that, listen, I have to do the work. I'm understanding what the book is saying. So I read the book the first time. And then I said, the book due Friday at 11, you know, I mean, when 11 o'clock come, you know, finish the first three that the book yet, you know, much less to start essay. And then after I finished the book, I went to my bed and I woke up the Saturday morning and I reread the book a second time. This time I'm reading the book to take notes, to find the different topics and themes that can be discussed. You understand me? And I was taking it out bit by bit so I could put it in my essay. Remember, say about due Friday, 10 o'clock, you know, and this is Saturday in the day. After I've done that, I gathered everything together and I said to myself, I'm going to write my essay. <laughs> right? Remember the book due Friday, 10 o'clock, and I'm going to write my essay Saturday evening. I started my essay. I stopped. I went to a pageant. I came back home and I finished my essay and I submitted it Sunday in the morning two days behind deadline, and I got an 80% flat. Two days behind deadline, and I got an 80% flat. That means, eh, after them don't penalize me for the deadline, I wrote a damn good essay. A darn good essay. <laughs> Which means that it can be done. You understand me? It's not a case in which you need to worry yourself. It can be done. And so I am speaking as someone who submitted it late, but still got a good grade. I'm not telling you to submit it later. Try and make sure you submit it Friday. But I'm saying to you that in that time frame now, even with your back against the wall, you can do the work. All right? So everybody just dash when you look face to face. Everybody but you help each other. If you've started the essay, now is the time for you to speak. If you've done a little bit of reading, now is the time for you to speak because we're going to do this as a team. Don't try me to push on down and have a CM look. Thank you. Push on down and have a CM look. No, but I pull my stunt. I don't know how me pull that stunt there, but me pull it. Don't pull that stunt. And the reason why I do book reports, the reason why I've done it, um... For the past two semesters or the past three semesters is because I understand that there's a lot of us out there like me who had no idea what to do coming down to the deadline. And so it's nice to have somebody who say, listen, I saw the book report doing that hard. 
But let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Let's get into the nitty gritty of it. I'm going to be sharing my screen. I'm not the type to share PowerPoints. I'm the type to sit down and write an entire essay with you or, you know, things like that to kind of get the information flowing. Because honestly, we tired of PowerPoint now. We already are doing it in a class. I'm also looking at the YouTube comments. So if you feel like I'm not looking at you, the phone is right here. So I'm reading as I go because I don't want it to be a case where you guys think that I'm not watching you. Everybody in here, everybody are trying to work together. So let's go. Ready? I'm going to be sharing my screen now. And uh, hold on. Let me share my screen. Hold on. Hold on. In the meanwhile, while I'm trying to share my screen, please get your papers together. Please get your book together. Uh, please get your essay together because we're going through this uh, together. I like this, guys. I really like this course. It was really good. It was really good for me. Like, I was really and truly a good student in my class. My teacher loved me. My teacher was Mr. Hudos. I don't know if he teaches nonetheless. Um, I know some of you have Candia. And she is just amazing, too. Um, she taught me um, She taught me some time ago. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, let me just get this out of the way. Um, let me just get all of this all the way. Um, sorry about that. Um, but I just don't want it to be a case in which this could break. All right. And central V. All right, guys. So ready? Who Jesus? All right. I'm ready. All right, let's go. Is my screen shared? Let me know if my screen is being shared. People in the Zoom, is my screen being shared? No, your not? screen is not no, being shared. Not. All right, let me go again. Not I'm I'm far from tech savvy, guys. So bear with me. Same as browse documents. All right, let's go. I think it's being shared now. What do we Oh, Jesus, web. That is screen now share. All right, you know what? We have enough foolishness going for the day. No, man, okay. it's, it's, it's going, it's going. It's shared. You're good. It's sharing? All right. Yeah, man, you're good. Yes, we're seeing. Okay, so let me, I'm waiting for YouTube to acknowledge the fact that they're seeing it. Let's go, YouTube. All right, YouTube seen it. You, YouTube seen it. Do not mind what I have here. It was from last year, but edited. So it's supposed to be Lucille Mayer, Lucille Matter Mayer, Varian Shepherd by Varian Shepherd. And we're doing this, we're getting these A's together. Now, um, fun fact. I just want to put that there. I'm a Seacolite. I live on the Mary Seacole Hall. And I just want to see where we're standing here. More see who read the book. And why would I be mentioning this to you? Like, why would I say to you that that's a fun fact? Because, because she was a warden of Mary Seacole. She was a warden. Not just a warden, but the first warden. Right. And so it's situations like this when you hear people mention things that you're supposed to, you know, make that connection um, for it. So as a sequel, like when I saw this book um, being um, published, when, I, when we saw the launch happening, we were really excited about it because we knew um, the powerful woman that was behind this book. And so we wanted to ensure, like, you know, you had that sense of pride when you were going through this book. And let me tell you, when I got the opportunity to read about her stay here at sequel and what she has done, it was something that, you know, I was really and truly relating to. So. Let's talk about a book report. 
um, the question that we got um, from your teacher was, read and critically comment on the assigned book, Lucille Mathur-Mayer by Professor Vereen Shepard. Employ critical thinking skills to write a 2,500 word book report in which you analyze the text within the context of the themes and topics of the course. Example, identity, colonialism, resistance, etc. Analyze the text within its social and historical content, context rather, and discuss the value of the book to understand Caribbean society. Right? And so this is what you're expected to do in your book report. We have to break it down. Um, let me change this word. Analyze. And analyze means to break an issue into all of its parts and to look in depth at each part using supporting arguments and evidence for and against, as well as how these interrelate to one another. So basically for analyze, they're asking you, and if you look at the themes and everything that they're expecting you, they want you to break a particular theme or a particular topic into parts. They want you to zoom in on that, broke it down, mash it down, so that the layman, a person who has never been to the University of the West Indies, a person who has never read Lucille Mather Mayer, can make some sort of con correlation or some sort of connection it looks small. Do you want me to zoom it? Zoom it in. Um, let me zoom it in. Is that okay? Yeah, man. I zoom in. I just realized YouTube. My apologies. Let me know YouTube if that is good. Okay, YouTube said that is good. All right, then. Um, yeah, man, it has show up on YouTube. All right, so um, so after they've asked you to look into these, they want you to go in depth and break it down, right? And then they want you to provide arguments for and against. That's basically you giving examples and then making a connection between this particular theme and the examples you have given. Yeah, that's what they mean when they say analyze. Social and historical context is basically how is it that you're going to look at these particular themes with your examples. So for instance, if we're supposed to talk about racism, yeah, and let, look here, this is not something we keep your mind muted, I mean, if you know so not alive and hearing me. But if you're supposed to be talking about something like racism, yeah? And you say that in Lucy Matthew Mayer, you've noticed the theme or the topic of racism. They need you now to say to them or give them some sort of historical context of racism happening in the Caribbean. How far can we date back that concept or that topic of racism? We can date it back all the way to slavery. We can date it back all the way to when Columbus come to, 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 to Jamaica or to the Caribbean. That's how far you can put it in terms of historical context. In terms of social context, we can talk about the fact that currently racism is still prominent in society. The fact that we have to be having a Black Lives Matter movement because of a finding a top killer of the man, the black man then, or the fact that um we still have us um we the fact that we have a watered down version of racism now in jamaica and the caribbean known as colorism shows that racism still has that significant impact in caribbean society so what i just done a while ago when i used the example about racism in history and racism in caribbean society i've literally just put the idea or the concept of racism in a social and historical concept so that the reader can connect that particular theme to what is happening in the caribbean if you don't understand tell me because god know i go fast and i want us to kind of get this done and out of the way yeah um and we continue nonetheless the revisionist idea was um from last year and then they want you to discuss the value of the book to understand caribbean society and so this in your way this particular part in your way is in a way is your personal opinion of what this book is about is this particular book a sensible book to understand what's happening in the caribbean now or before can I use a book of Lucille Mathur Mayer 
to make a connection to Caribbean society. Would this be a good book for me to give to somebody and say, listen to me, yes, if you read this, you might find a thing or two that was happening in the Caribbean, you might can make a connection to what's happening today. Somebody asked me to explore more or explain more into the social content. We'll get into that. No worry yourself, no worry yourself, no worry yourself. But I was just, just breaking it down to explain to you what they mean when they say analyze the text within the social and historical context. All right, let me just go over that part again, just for the sake of time. Analyze the text within its social and historical context. They want you to talk about what was happening in society at that time for this particular theme to be prominent in the book. And so I will give you an example. If we're supposed to look at the theme of racism, you can look at the fact that currently in that time, racism was prominent because there was an active hate happening against black people. And you can use the example of the fact that Lucille mother's, Lucille father was going through a lot overseas in terms of racism, racism, racism. Ugh, hear me as a fact, right? And if you're going to make a historical connection, you can talk about the fact that racism, I'm, I'm, I'm either disconnected or I'm back. Um, you can talk about, why did, why you may look on YouTube and be disconnected? You can talk about the fact that, um, you can talk about the fact that racism has been dating back from the period of slavery or before slavery. So that's how you put it in a historical and social context. I, us right now would probably not be experiencing colonialism because at that particular time that was happening colonialism was happening in that particular historical concept and that particular social concept um somebody says should all this be in one paragraph no but i was just talking about um i was just going up going through it a little bit so we could get it in a just to go give you a synopsis let me go into it please before you you give it just let me go in a hit yeah um, somebody's asking exactly where did we see um, Miss Mayor's father going through some sort of racism. There was a part in the first paragraph that talked about it. Um, let me just move this. Let me tell you where it is. Funny enough, am I, is my screen still being um, shared? Would it be the part where um, the mother never really liked black people but because of... Um, his basically his financial standing or his standing as a person. Um, close enough, close, very close enough. But um, there is a part in the start of the book that spoke about the fact that um, let me find it for you because I'm going through the book while I talk. Um, there's a part in the book that talks. It's in chapter. See, somebody says it's in chapter one. It's in chapter seven. Um, but there's a part in the book where it spoke about, there was a very small part. Um, we know for pregnant Edith. Um, okay, um, I'm looking for it. There's a part in the first part, guys. I Trust me, I know what I'm saying. I know about that part, that there was a part in which he, um, see, all right, there. So others have subsequently tried to offer a reason for his behavior linking to, to his inabil inability to support his family in New, New York and to his both of depressions and feelings of displacement from living in a racist society, right? Um, and so you can look at that too as a part. Her mother was not racist. Racist is not the term to use, but we'll get into that. Racist is not the term to use when you talk about her mother, but we'll look into that, all right? So we're getting that out of the way and we're going back to the, we're going back through it. So we've talked about it. We're discussing the value of the book to understand Caribbean society. Um, guys, hold on, hold on. I see we're asking a lot of questions and I love for us to go through it bit by bit first before we start pulling in the questions, yeah? Colorism, there we go. Classism, there we go. Not racism, not, mm -mm, not racism, but there we go. So now, after we've done all of this, after we've done, after we've understand what the question is asking, because we just broke through it, right? We just broke it down. We just brought down everything. We're going to go into the contents of the essay. Your essay must have 
three main parts or four if you want to split the personal view into its own way. But um, no, that's okay, that's okay. Whoa, that was fast. But your essay have three main parts. One is the introduction, two, the body of the essay, three is the conclusion and the point, the personal view. You can put the personal view as a se separate part before the conclusion, it's up to you. I normally just merge the two of them and call it a day, but it's up to you on what you want to do. And your personal view is basically the part in which you'll be discussing the value of this book um, when looking at Caribbean society. All right, so far so good, let me know. Yes. All right then. So let's talk about the introduction. The introduction must have a brief biography of the personnel. Who is Lucille Mathermeer, right? Who is this particular person? Why is it, um, what has this person has, has accomplished in life for us to even be doing a whole book for her? What contribution has this particular woman made to Caribbean society for us to be even writing an entire biography about her? So you yourself is giving us, you're gonna be giving the reader a small, very simple summary of who Miss Mathermere is. So it can be two, three um, sentences. Um, honestly, we don't need a lot It's your introduction. If you want before you give four, you don't need to be a lot, but we need to know who is Lucille, um, where was she born, what is our accomplishment, our accomplishments, and why is it that we're writing a book of, for her? What has she contributed to this particular society for us to be even sitting here and writing a whole book for this woman, right? After we've talked about who Lucille, Lucille is, we now need to figure out who is Miss Berene Shepard. What, um, and the reason why we're doing this is because we need to know that this woman is worthy Melissa Hart says 600 words is good. 600 words can even be too much. But all right, go on. But I think 600 words is too much, trust me. For your, for your introduction, seeing that you have 2,500 words to work with, you're gonna need that some of those words to go into the rest of your points, but we'll move. We need to know that the author who write this book is credible. It's a valid, valid, valid person that can write a book like this. We can, you cannot expect somebody like me to get up and write a whole biography and then just take your feed all on. You got me? You cannot expect for someone in primary school to just write a biography and then just say, all right, then give it to the world. We need to know that the person who is writing this book is someone of substance, someone who is in a position to be able to write such a book that it can be given not only to you as students, but to the entire world to read and say that mm, this is a sensible book so you need to give a little bit of information about the author as well the book's layout and the reason why i'm saying that you need to do the book layout is just to give the person what is exactly in the book so the book contains how many chapters eight, mm -hmm. eight. eight chapters, eight chapters. Mm -hmm. and 87 pages Eight chapters and 87 pages, that's it. So you need to just say that this book contains eight chapters and 87 pages that fuels the reader about the life and work of Lucy and Matthew Mayer. That's all I want, for, when, that's all I'm asking when they want to know what's in the book layout. After you've done all of this, after you've told them a brief biography about Lucille, information about Vereen, the layout of the book, and we now need to break it down to go to the most important part of our essay, the thesis statement. What is your thesis statement? All of the essays already. Your thesis statement is the last thing in your introduction. And what your thesis statement does is that it introduces the reader to what is going to be discussed in the body of the essay. So you will be saying to the reader, it, in this particular thesis statement, you need to highlight the themes that you will be discussing in the body of the essay in relation to the book that you have read. Yeah? That's it. After you've written the thesis statement, you're not allowed to put nothing else in your introduction. Your introduction is finished. 
how you want to read your thesis statement or you want to word your thesis statement is up to you, but it must include the themes that you will be talking about in your particular um book report um somebody said that they thought the word limit was the, the, the book had 97 pages it's 97 inclusive of table of contents and then some there but in terms of the actual book it's 87 all right on mm -hmm. yeah you get me all right so everybody understand what is expected of you in the introduction yes everybody all right so we understand what's in the introduction, right? All right. Somebody yeah. is asking the grand question. In your thesis statement, how many themes are you expected to put there? The least you can put is three. The most I would recommend to stay within your word limit is five. Yaga has some extra people who want the seven. But what that does is it ruins your opportunity to have a substantial essay with good notes. You understand me? If you have four solid, rock solid points for your, your essay, you're good. You're good, 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 good. Um, if you have four rock solid points in your essay, you're good. You're good. I'm going to be giving an example of a thesis statement. We're going to be doing all of this together. And if you have five, you're excellent. And if you have three, you're okay. But ensure that if you have three, there are three powerful, why am I sister in <laughs> There are three powerful themes so that you can write a 2,500 word essay on it, which means that you need to have a lot of evidence. You need to be put in the context. You need to do all of that. So three, three is okay. Four is great. Five is excellent. I'm hosting a session now. Somebody's asking, somebody just literally asked me if um if I used to do carib Um I'm hosting a session right now. So let me just let me just send it and get it over with. Sorry about that, guys. Please tell your friends again um, that if they don't get access, access to the Zoom, they can join the YouTube. Me not let up, me left out me YouTube. But let's continue. So you need, if you have three, you're okay. If you have four, you're great. And if you have five, you're powerful. You're good. Don't rush for have five. Don't rush for, don't kill off yourself in a competition for you have the most. Just make sure you have what you need, yeah? That's all. Just make sure you have what you need. So let's move on from the thesis statement. Um, yes, yes, Melissa. Yes, Melissa. <laughs> yes, Melissa. All right. So let's move from the thesis statement. We've done the introduction. We've gotten the grasp, and we're moving into the body of the essay. All right. Watch me. I have listed four points here because in a typical, like I said, three, four, five. So four is the middle. I would be discussing four themes which means that the least amount of paragraph I can have for this essay is how much, the body of the essay. I'm asking, I'm genuinely asking. Four, six. Four. four. I'm using the mic and talk to me now, guys. We can't, we can't go get this to the chat. We can't go get this to the chat. I'm using the mic, right. The least four. amount that I would have if I'm discussing four themes is four paragraphs, four big long paragraphs. Normally, some students, they split their paragraphs in two because they know that they're discussing a lot. Um, but it's up to you if you want to. But the least you're supposed to have at this time is four paragraphs in your body, in the body of your essay, in the body of your essay, four paragraphs, yeah? In this paragraph, hold on, go ahead, Kemoy. Kemoy, right, raise this hand, go ahead. <laughs> she raised her hand. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, honey. I was saying that I heard you come in that you, if, you're, if you're going to talk about a lot of stuff, you can split it into two, mm -hmm. right? But um, I also heard 
someone else said that um that's not supposed to happen. You're supposed to have one consistent paragraph. I feel like I'm work with you, Seka. You sound like you have sense. No, man. Hold on. Hold on. The reason why I'm saying this, you know, the reason why I'm saying this is you might look on your paragraph and feel as if you want to continue on that topic, but at the same time, you want to split your paragraph. That's fine. The paragraph, you know, the two paragraphs will still remain consistent, meaning the story will fall behind each other, going down, going down, going down, going down, right? I read in the YouTube, I'm funny over there, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, you can split the paragraph. If you don't want to, you don't have to. To be very honest, I split mine because it didn't look too long. But as long as there's consistency happening, so the person is right, as long as there's consistency happening, yeah, I'm a good so oh because that they were saying they, lit they literally said that if you split it you're going to lose marks that's why sorry go ahead go ahead. one more so, time repeat yourself baby so i was saying that they literally said that if you split it you're going to lose marks that's why so i was kind of because the whole entire something with like how much words in it and it just long and just did it so it would have just looked weird to me so i was asking them if i could never heard it. of a teacher taking off marks for a paragraph I've never heard of that, <laughs> you know? But if it is that you want to be on the safe side, go ahead. But I'm going to be very honest. I don't know if a teacher that would take off marks for you to... Uh, is a teacher said that? Is a solid question. Is a teacher said that? Uh, no. A is a friend said that? Tutor. No, my friend of mine sends. Is a tutor said that? Well, I don't know. I honestly don't see where I why a teacher would take out points for you to have an extra paragraph. I don't see why a teacher would take out points if you're consistent with your paragraph and letting the reader know that you're continuing on the topic on a particular theme. So I'm going to see when you're going to lose marks you want extra paragraph. Even if you want extra paragraph, it's extra paragraph still in the word limit. You're good. But I don't know. That's the tutor. I don't know. I'm just here. <laughs> right? But, um, Crit is a different case. Crit is a different case. But I, um, if this is a tutor, if this is a UWE tutor, work with a UWE tutor. If this is a random tutor, I don't know. I don't see why. Mm, I never see that before. And this is somebody who has seen students get them grades and have multiple paragraphs. I've never seen that as a case. I don't know if it's a new thing, but I don't know of that. Um, I don't know about that. Mm -mm. I don't know about that. But if you want to, um, let's go. But if, it's up to you, Kevoy. But Kemoy, but I'm telling you, I don't know of that. I don't know that. Um, right. That's okay, baby. You understand? You're good? Yeah, man. Thank you much. Yeah, man. So the body of the essay now, I'm saying to you that you would have four points. The reason why I list it like this is because I put the middle, which is four, three, four, five. Your first point will talk into the first theme that you're talking about or the first topic that you observe in the book. The second point will cover the second theme or the second topic that you've, ex ex um, you've um, experienced in the book. The third point or the third theme that you've experienced is the third point or the third, the third point this covers the third theme or the third topic that you've seen in the book. And the fourth point, if you should be so lovely, will cover the fourth topic or the fourth theme that you've seen in your book. Walk with me. This is where I need you to listen to me. Ready? To write a particular point or to cover a particular theme, you must first highlight the theme that is present within the book. Meaning, you need to say, and I'm just giving, this is, this is being very simple. I don't need to be simple. If you want to be extra with a book report, please be extra with a book report. If you an extra mark, I'm assuming. Probably not, but uh. you can say a theme that was prominent in um, Lucille, Mayer, Lucille Matthew Mayer by Vereen Shepard, um, quote 2021, is male absenteeism. <clears throat> yeah? Full stop. That is where I've literally just highlighted the theme that I'm going to be discuss discussing in the first point. Next sentence. Male absenteeism, according to, and your list of scholar, and you define what male absenteeism is, full stop. Everybody with me so far? Somebody just said, how do you differentiate between a team or a topic? At the same team, Jamie, at the same team, 
there's no topic mm-hmm. or no theme or teacher just use you know at the same thing could you repeat <laughs> what you said just now yeah but i'm going to go but I'm, let me address jamie okay. um it's the same thing there's no look here when they say what's a theme or a topic guys it's the same thing if I say resist, if I say resistance, resistance is a theme, resistance is a topic. If I say racism, racism is the theme, or racism is a topic. There is no difference in terms of like the topic for the day is, is, is the color yellow. It's the same, you understand? Me? It's the same thing. Yeah? All right, so let's go back into the first point. This is how this is the basic layout. Please, it's just a basic layout. Let's go. A prominent theme that was highlighted in Lucille Matthew Mayor by Vereen Shepherd is male absenteeism. That's the first sentence I have there for my first point. According to XYZ, so now I'm using the source, there's a theme of a theme comes as a source. I don't, Rihanna, Rihanna, we are gonna do one example. We are gonna do one example. We are gonna, we are gonna, uh-uh. Mm-mm. <laughs> Male absenteeism, according to XYZ, and we're using a reference or a scholar, male absenteeism is, and we define what male absenteeism is. Yeah? Let us pause for a while. You must, for every definition that you give for a theme, you must have a scholar that speaks on this definition. So you cannot just write a definition for male absenteeism without having some sort of reference or source that gave you that information about what male absenteeism is. Because to be very frank, I never you come up with that word name. And so if you're going to accredit a historian or a sociologist, or a dictionary, as um, one of those sociology dictionary or one of those history dictionary, something like that. But you need to define what male accent, you need to define what your theme is. And then after you define what your, yes, you have to use a source to define the theme. You need to credit someone for the, the definition of that theme. Someone or something. We're going to do an example. You're, you're not bright like the sun, you queen us. Because they're, they're, the mere fact that you know that word means that somebody came up with that word for you. <laughs> but all right, so let's go again. So we've said that we found the theme, which is male absenteeism. We define what male absenteeism is, is absenteeism. What, work with me, guys, not the, not the best speaker. Shut up. <laughs> we define what male absenteeism is, and we give reference. We use a source to define that, right? We then tell the reader where we find male absenteeism present in the book. And I'm gonna ask you this question because I want us to use this. Where do you find ex- a male absenteeism in the book? Tell me, and this is a genuine question. Chapter Tell me. Wait, when he is father. Chapter one. Chapter one. In chapter, chapter one. one. But tell me chapter where, where what, is it, what is being said in chapter one? Mere's father who didn't take care of her. Huh? Lucille's father. Who wasn't in her life? All right. He wasn't in there. He went away to work. Him and his mother never worked with him. Never said, King Kong, look to pick them. Where else? Where his father Children. was absent in his life. His father was absent in his life. Where else? It's her children. Their father died. Ah, uh, and then I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lucille's father was absent. Was Lucille's mother's father absent as well? I don't remember. But I know that, they, so there is it that you're giving your examples where you see male absenteeism. You understand me? And what you need to do now when you're given that example is put in a bracket, chapter one, page A, uh, or just chapter one. But there's a there's a male there's male absenteeism happening there. You understand me? So you are giving the reader where in the book can they find male absenteeism? Not true. That's it. That's it. Somebody said when the new husband went abroad. Ah, there we go. Go ahead, Maya. Raise your hand, Miss Davidson. Hi. So I just wanted to know: Would you have to put um more than one? Um, example yeah 
or they um, just have to put one probably like the most well, important it would one. be good for you to give more than one and if you don't have more than one it's good for you to just but you have to have some sort of example you can't just say you're here both you're sitting at the book you're not sitting at the book you understand me okay okay thank you yeah and guys, it doesn't have to be literally written out in the book because best believe that revisionism is happening in the book as well. But you're not going to literally say revisionism happening in the book, but I'll explain for that. So here is it that we've given the examples of where we find male absenteeism taking place in the book. Not sure. Everybody get this so far. Boom, bam. Yeah. We now need to link male absenteeism whether it is in a historical context or a social context to Caribbean society. Is male absenteeism a thing in society? No, in Caribbean society. Yes. 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 Because we have single parents. So we have a whole heap of women around them pick me alone. A whole heap of, let me tell you something. I don't know if you guys have ever realized. I know most of you are on Instagram and Twitter. But when Mother's Day come on Twitter, Everybody mother get post. Everybody mother get post. Hear the funny thing. When Father's Day comes on Twitter, everybody mother get post. Why? There is no papa dear, no father, no dead dear. None of them not dead if you take care of them. So then guess what? The father absent same way. And if you don't want to look at it in terms of male absenteeism, you can even look at it as male marginalization. You get me? So that is us explaining that one, we see male absenteeism in the book. And two, male absenteeism is still happening today. Today, today. But here's the thing now. You need to find some sort of scholarly source to back you. Is there a sociologist that talk about male absenteeism? Yes. When Niam, boom, bam, right answer. Let's say George Beckford. It's probably not him. Let's say George Beckford. But we can say George Beckford speaks about male absenteeism in the Caribbean when he says, and you talk with George Beckford say, and that is you using a scholarly article to back your source. I want you need, you don't need 20. If you are one, you're good. If you are one, you're good. But you need something to back your source, some sort of historical scholar some sociology scholar, some social study, some, somebody like that, but you need a Marxist, somebody to back that, that male absenteeism is happening in society. Pause. We just look at it in terms of social context. Let's look at it as history. Male absenteeism has been happening from slavery days. From slavery days, they met the man, and this is how they say, you breed the, the, the slave woman, and then we don't want you there. We don't want you to have a family structure. We don't want you to be solid like that. We're going to move you. And so the fathers are then separated from their family and break, they're brought to somewhere else. That is male acceptism, showing how far it is coming from, from history, from slavery days. I'm going to tell people, say, man, no, fi dey dey. Man, fi left them, woman, and go find a job, and, but they're not there. You get what me I say? Or do you understand what I'm saying when I say that this is how you tackle a point in your essay? This is how you tackle a point in the essay. So we just said to them, you know, we just, you know, right now, you know, that little discussion where we just have, you know, we've created our first point. We have created our first point because we've just spoken to them and explained to them that male absenteeism is a thing that is this, this is happening in Caribbean society. We see it in the book. We've given them the example. We give them a scholarly article, somebody who backs what it's saying. And then we took it down a notch and then we tell them, say, it's apparent in society in terms of um social and historical context we can latch it in a boat of them because it's happening you understand me and somebody just said what if you use gender there's a lot of subtopic you can even push it to the point to say because of male absenteeism women had to step up to the plate to become the providers for families yeah and then how you do it is that you can give an example to say look here even though this happened in a such a sad way, because you know, say the husband dead, rape. 
she had to step to the plate to become the the, the, the the man of the family you understand me and so she had to take on the role as a powerful single woman single single mother to play both father and mother no patriarchy is not the same as male absenteeism it's not amishka you get me you get what me i say so then you can so you see this is you writing a line of an essay you know you're writing a one paragraph but lana telling you know, because you've now made a connection to male absenteeism as to why women had to step up to the plate in that era they must become mother and father lucy end up a feet turn on who a mother and father chef and make sure that she did the chef and make money chef yeah chef yeah do all of this year and then you talk about the fact that lucy went from that to being a mother to being a teacher, to being a caregiver, to being a warden. All of this is happening because women had to step up to the plate because men were not there. And you can link it to current society where you see women stepping up to the plate because men are not there. We have to link it to society, to social and historical context. A matrifocal society is created because of male absenteeism. Onandi, Onandi, Onandi just gave us a good thing. Onandi says, and this is how you need to put it if you're going to use this as a theme, but I'm giving an example. Um, because of male absenteeism, thank you, Onandi, we have been introduced to a matrifocal society which is basically the mother is the, the, the women are the ones who kind of take over things now and we it, it's it's still happening it's still happening yeah but yeah guys so that's us with that that's us with that that's us with a um a point and so the more you write the more you make connections throughout the book the more you write the more you make connections throughout the book the more you write the more you make connections throughout the book trust me so we have just created, just by us chit-chatting or just by me chit-chatting, we have created a paragraph, a whole point, a whole theme for the essay. Everybody understand me? Tell me. I'm new to my Let me know so you, you, you understand me. Clear, clear. Clear, clear. understand you clearly. All right. And so here um, we I are now. And I'm just giving you an example of what a point is. Um, Miss Harvey, explain what you mean by unit because I don't understand what I mean. So go again. <laughs> and somebody is saying, where does matriarchy come in? And that's based, I just explain how it works on matriarchy. Um, we're going to get into education as a team, Kemoy, but it's up to you guys. Yeah, but we talk about um, matriarchy, um, how it comes in. That's what I'm talking because of absenteeism. We end up having women at the, they say we should connect it to the, okay, so somebody's saying, how do we connect it to the units of the course? Best believe that this is things that are discussed during care civilization. Mm -hmm. This, what we are discussing is happening in the course. We teacher has discussed this in the course. And I, I, I apologize for those over YouTube who can't unmute their mic, but the powerful, the beautiful thing about it is I'm making sure that I'm reading your comments. So I'm going to miss you. I don't want to feel left out. I'll always try to get with degree. We're great. Yeah. So, yeah. And we understand. So, yeah, we understand. We understand what, um, what we need when we talk about the body of the essay. Yeah. Are we good? I have a question. Right. What is this? The scene, that you, the scene that you discussed in the body, you didn't list it in the CC statement. Like, for example... No, 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 you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't do that. You can do that. All right, let me explain, let me explain to you, Tiona. If you have, let's say you have male absenteeism as your theme, right, Tiona? And we say that male absenteeism has led to a matrifocal society or matriarchy or um, something like that. That is not the theme, you know, that is just an addition or, 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 or you making a connection to Caribbean society. Your theme would still be, what that name? Male absenteeism, if you get what I'm saying. Can you give an example? Like, can you give me three themes and then 
Well, well, Tiana, the question is, you know, you just ask the question, give me your themes that you're asking about and I can answer for you because you're asked, the thing is, you know, if it is not in your thesis statement, there's no way on earth you can put it in the body of your essay. And then you have other people who have different themes that they want to hear you speak on. Oh, well, that's, hello, guys. That's what I wanted to say. I'm not here to teach you the themes. I'm here to just facilitate the discussion on the themes. So if you have a theme and you want us to make a discussion on the theme, I'm good with that. But I cannot be here telling you all the themes and I say, well, mm -mm, I cannot do the essay for you. I'm just here to help you guys to understand what's being done. Yeah. Somebody is saying, so for the so in the intro, can you list themes found in the book and then introduce a theme that you will be discussing in the thesis statement? I mean, I understand what you mean, but here's the thing. The themes that you will be discussing will be in the introduction because your thesis statement will say something like this. The writer wishes to expound on the prominent themes in the book, such as, and then you list the themes that you will be discussing. You know what I mean? If it, look here, your, your introduction, and if you have no, 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 your introduction, if you just have who the woman be, what the woman do, when the woman born, who the author be, how the book set, and your thesis statement. You know, if you write no land, not meaning introduction, your introduction, and just the taste of the audience, when they know you're write a damn good essay. That's it. When I need to, ooh, hold on, a darn good essay. I, I really not. Um, Example and sentence. You know what I mean? All right, somebody is asking, do we list all the examples first, then link them to social and historical That's context? No. Oh. Actually, the reason why I do it like that is because it provides yes, But you don't have to. I only, somebody, somebody, Mike is on mute. Mute your mic, please. Mute your mic. Miss Bailey. Yes, Miss Bailey. Yes, I don't want anything with me. So I need to tell them. Okay. Thank you, Miss Bailey. <laughs> Dijane, Dijane, mute, please. Right, I was saying to you, um, somebody is asking if you can personalize the thesis in, in, in terms of saying, I will be expounding. It is not recommended, but because you don't want it to be an I, I thing, but you can. Normally, I just said a writer will. Or, yeah, you can say I will. Or you can just say the things that will be explored are. Um, Somebody had asked me something, said so to repeat again. That's okay, Dijani. Um, Somebody had asked me to repeat like, oh, I'm saying to you guys that you don't have to do it the way I do it, meaning list it, define it, give examples, then make the connection. But I do that because it gives structure. You understand me? Oh, God, somebody said they're not here. Oh, they're not here. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, we're here. Okay, okay. All right, then. Hold on. Hold on, Onika. All right, go ahead, Onika. No, it's too much, but I'm, I'm, I think Onika can go on since my talk time already. So when you finish, I'll speak then. Go ahead, um, Onika. Hi. Um, so in the book, I see the theme feminism. It's there. But um, I also the theme is also um, combined with education because she created um, female, some course on something about female women something so can i write both of them in like if I, if I introduce the theme feminism can i mention education in the paragraph and if i do the theme education can i mention the feminism in that paragraph as well or do yeah. i combine both yes you can so but in that case like you're talking about education and you're going to say, well, if it's a case that you're talking about feminism and you're going to say feminism um, kind of developed in the Caribbean because of education. Yeah, but um, is that what you're asking? Um, yes, yes, Miss. The, um, an evidence of feminism would be, it would encapsulate um, feminism in it. So the two themes are kind of together. So I'm asking Inter if I yeah, 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 yeah. You're okay. You're okay. And I would, I would encourage you to use them separately because education takes on a lot more than just feminism, and feminism takes on a lot more than education. Yeah. 
So yeah, but you can, so you can include, you can, when you're talking about feminism, you can say it stem from education, yeah. And when you're talking about education, you can talk about feminism found in true education, yeah. But I would still want you to do a whole point on feminism and a whole point on education. So I would like to see them as two separate themes as well. Well, not I, you're, I I'm assuming your lecture would like to see it like that. Not me, your lecture. Anyways, so I hope that answers your question. Go ahead, Kamoy. And persons in the, oh. the, the YouTube, if you have questions, let me see. Go ahead. Go ahead, come on. Okay, um, I was saying that because I just wanted to know if my outline for my introduction is okay. As I say, I did it already. I kind of tighten up on it today. But I don't know if I tighten up, actually tighten up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had, um, yeah, I have when she born, and we she born to kind of more at the, you know, only the half a mark, this all. Mm -hmm. And like I had, um, I have a little bit about her, well, not really a little bit, but part about her and um, a little bit of the author, but I also included a link between her and the author before right. my thesis statement. Is and that that's okay? True. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. All right. Um, so... Is it a theme under the five units we learned so far? So I don't remember a unit name, male absentees, my matriarchy. So not to get that migration as a theme. Who is marking this? I want, just want to, you to move on to point two and so on. So, all right. So somebody is saying that, and that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Somebody is saying that they don't see male absentees under the five units. Um... Hold on before I go any further. Oh, my battery run Leo. Amanda, Amanda, carry me. Pause, pause for the cause, guys. I'm gonna switch. Amanda, carry me. It's hard to come. Hold on, guys. My battery, my battery, my battery. Why? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> charge? All right. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. My battery, my, my laptop battery almost died on me. All right. So, all right. Somebody is, guys, hear, hear what I'm saying. If it is that you don't see male absenteeism under your units, that's fine. You can link it to either somebody saying family is there, so you can link it to family. You can link it to um, migration because migration would have led to male absenteeism, and then it can continue the story. Um, let me see. So there you can you can look at it. Um, somebody is saying in the YouTube. YouTube saying education as a theme. Talk about how it's still evident in society. What do you mean by book layout and intro? May have may, may I'll have born, Madam Father. If I choose to do gender inequality, do I have to include male in, inequality? No, if you're if you're choosing gender inequality, you can use, you can just talk about female inequality, inequality. Um look like me have too much. You're perfectly fine. Can you explore an identity? Why everybody want me to go and edit? Yeah, you know, identity is the one that I was trying to avoid. Whatever the theme has a lot of topics. It has a lot of topics. That's fine. Once you can discuss what you need to discuss, you don't need to rush into it. Um, Jamie, I was answering your question before my battery died, so please continue. Can colonialism be linked with education? The same paragraph, it can. Um, thank you, Shade. Can both sexism and women's empowerment be used as themes? Um, Sexism, <laughs> the problem, <laughs> if you can see enough evidence for sexism, go right ahead. Honestly, if you can see enough evidence of sexism, go right ahead. Um, women in how about, Excuse me, how about using gender and add sexism as a subtopic? If you want to use gender inequality, that's fine, and under that sexism would fall. Can racism and colorism be used as one topic? It can. So with this link, would I put male absenteeism in the thesis or just family? That's what I'm saying, guys. Listen, 
Hold on. Let me see what the question is asking because I don't want to be the I I know me not enough for sure, but me go me go back go look. I'm not want to say. The question is asking. Pause for me, please. I just want to know that I don't tell enough foolishness. Analyze the text within the context of themes and topics of the course. Example: identity, colonialism, resistance, etc. Analyze the text within the social and historical context. Discuss the value of the book to understand Caribbean society. Let me message with Dr. Hall to ensure that we're not telling her. Don't move. And I'm gonna be very frank about it, guys. If you, let me tell you something. If you don't want to use it like that, I have no problem with you changing it to fit it. If you want to fit it on a family life, you can. If you want to fit it on a migration, you can. The reason why I drew, I draw, I drew whatever the word is. The reason why I'm a pull for that theme there in particular is because it's a very powerful thing to look at in this particular um book report and reason being everybody well for those who read the book you know that there is a hate that lucille has you know you know shining nobody dead towards her father right because of main absenteeism and in a way i felt like that pushed her into focusing on empowering and pushing and you know bringing women across but that's just me but i'm looking to see I'm looking to see if your teacher. Um, I go. I trying to. I text in her to see if there's nothing that I would have um, overslept when we are talked. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if there's a problem. But let me tell you something. You see, I'm the type who I'm not going to. What I what I say is not written in stone for a reason. So if it is that you're not comfortable using male absenteeism, and this is, and I'm not telling you guys that you have to use it because this is a thing that you don't have to use or a topic that you don't have to use. But if you're not comfortable using that direct, you want to look at your life or mission, that's fine with me. I your I have no problem. And I don't think your teacher, um, do what your teacher want, Doctor. And yeah, it talks about male marginalization. Yeah. So um, that's why I went for male absenteeism. But here one. Children of God, children of Caribbean, we can do what we want to. Let us not be. It's not nothing that I say here is written in stone, honestly. The social stratification entail racism and colorism. It does. It does. Racism feeds for social stratification. Colorism feeds for social stratification. I don't want to answer the questions yet. I want done so who I want to get everything done so that people they can get what they made and left over can ask them questions. All right, so let's move. Let's move. Let's move before we go into the questions. Before we go into the questions, let's finish the essay. My internet connection is unstable. You hear me over YouTube? Yeah, I will be doing that soon, Melissa. All right, guys. So let's get let's get this out of the way because honestly, we don't want to waste enough time. We just want to get it out of the way. Conclude. So we did the body of the essay. How we're gonna be outlining it. Last thing, conclusion and personal. We just belch for the line. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> conclusion and personal view. Jaja. I'm bending my finger now. Conclusion and personal view. Ready? So this particular part, you'll be doing your personal view before your conclusion. I should have said that. Um, but your personal view is basically, you know, that section C of what is required in the essay, the part that speaks about um, discuss the value of this um, book to Caribbean society. It takes out of your view as well. And for this particular part, that's discussing the it's a good book 
this is a book. This book helps persons to understand um, how we work or how we socialize in this particular society. In this particular area too, you're allowed to give your honest opinion. They cannot penalize you. If you say that you felt like this book was lacking a lot, you can say that. If you feel as if this book did not grasp what Caribbean society is about, you can say that. If you believe that this book was a creme de la creme of um, explaining Caribbean civilization, how we work in a Caribbean society, you can say that. That's the privilege of you being able to discuss the value and giving your personal view. And then the conclusion is just a quick wrap up, a quick um, reminder, and a quick nice way to end it, to say thank you all for reading my essay. Please give me a good regret. God bless you. And that's our book report. I'm, I'm, mm. Am I okay? Am I, am I, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me, Zoom? Yes, Miss, we're hearing Yes, we are. But you were cracking right. up earlier. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Right. Um, don't say, please give me a good grade. Don't say that, guys. But I'm saying that's how you, you just wrap it up nice and neat. That's your way of just wrapping it up. When I did my essay, um, I gave my personal view of, I did Burn Not Bernie. And my personal view of the book was that um, I wish that they had went more in depth about what was happening with Burl in the Caribbean, more so than what she did outside of the Caribbean because um, we wanted to see her impact here. So it wasn't just supposed to be, most of the time during that particular, particular book, I heard about burial when people, like me never hear no more burial really active in the Caribbean. And so that was a, a shortfall for me. And I wrote that in my book report. But at the same time, I talked about the impact that she had to performing arts, you know, and dancing and creating theater life. I talked about that, but at the same time, I made a note that there was a part of the book that I did not appreciate. And I did not, I was not penalized for that because I am talking like a Caribbean civilization student, which means that I know the work. And so I'm going to say to them that it's good, but I believe that it's lacking. That was my personal view. That's how I did that. And then for my conclusion, I just wrapped up everything that I discussed, um, I basically just kind of repeated what my sources were, um, talked about, you know, give the credit, give the author a little bit of props for what they did, and that was it. Yes, I, cri I critique the author, yeah, that's the part. So that's, yeah, so you talk about what the author did, if you can go a little bit, if she, there was a shortcoming, if you wish the author could have done this instead, it's your personal opinion of what you think of the book. And Sorry, so, I, I'm, are you saying that we're supposed to do the, the personal view before the conclusion? It's up to you. Yeah, I did mine before the conclusion. You can do yours before the conclusion or after. As a matter of fact, you can merge it as one paragraph and do it and end it. Because um, I had done that. All right, thank you. Because, and the reason why I'm saying this to you, um, I don't know who was talking, but remember that you have to discuss the value of this book to Caribbean society. And so in that paragraph, I had discussed the value of the book to Caribbean society. And then not only did I do that, but I kind of gave my personal view or my personal grading of this book. That's what I did. Okay, thanks. I, I guess I was just trying to figure out, you know, cause, um, conclusion and personal views seem almost intertwined yes they, because, they yeah. are to be very honest they are um and so like i say you don't have to separate them just because as you see i have it written here it's just merged as one that's why i did it um also you the word limit is 2500 if you if you can't reach 2500 words your teacher now go kill your filler cough by a hundred. If you pass two thousand five hundred words, your teacher now go kill you against you. Somebody, somebody, somebody is is talking. Yes. And let me just mute you. I'm gonna mute everybody because somebody is talking, and so the person who is talking to me can know on you because somebody else was talking. Right. Um, Sorry. Yeah. So yeah, because I'm. In, for our tutor, um, what he suggested was mm -hmm. um, if you give somewhere between 2,000, 2,200 words, yeah. you, you would get an A, but it would be a very Absolutely. low A. Is, yeah, he, 
he was very clear. Anything, you know, basically anything under 200, 2,200 plus words is just going to be a low A. So if you want to get that high A, you Lock need to, to aim. Cl- yes, exactly. Is what he was saying. I agree. I would say go, go. At, like I said, if they won't knock you. They would. They would. They wouldn't hurt you for two thousand four if you can't reach your two thousand five, and they won't kill you for two thousand five hundred fifty, two thousand six hundred. But just try to keep in the it in the two range. You understand me? So the minute you realize that your word can't count to nineteen hundred, you're doing something wrong. Honestly, you're doing something wrong. And to be very honest, quite a few, you got things, it's a whole lot of work to do, um, to feel, but then when you start writing, you go realize you have to take out some things out of your paragraph to make sure it's everything who are the word in it. Um, yeah. So now we've going, we're going into, so, let me, let me remove a word because <laughs> I don't want to say obvious. But um, some of these themes are discussed in your class. Some of these themes are discussed in your class. And from what I notice, and this is just what I notice, and I won't be able to give everybody all the information. It's just that I notice it. And to be very honest, you got things that some whole lot of work to do. Um, <laughs> she played me in the background, Kiana. Sorry about that. Um, I'm sorry, where were we? Out of 10, how much would I rate this book? Um, this is gonna be it's best. I'm, I'm gonna say it's best to an extent because, like I said, this is this is the same thing here. This is us, you know. But I'd give it a seven. I'd give it an eight. Um, hmm. I'd probably give it an eight or a nine. I'd give it an eight. I'd give it an eight because, to be very honest, it's very. It's just the information was just there, and like for me, we wanted. I wanted a gra- I wanted some sort of connection, and then. Like after she left fine, after she left Jamaica, I'd give it a, I'd give it a solid eight. I'd give it a solid eight, honestly. Yeah. Anyways, let's look at the themes in the book. Let's look at the themes in the book. Um, and mm. these were some of the themes that I identified. And the reason why I identified them is just because just from reading the book, I could see that this, these were things that were going to be discussed nonetheless. Um, and I looked at feminism, I looked at Caribbean identity, I looked at colonialism, I looked at political movements, I looked at colorism slash racism, and that can also be done as classism. Um, and I looked at education and religion. The reason why I looked at education was education in a way, if you looked at the first two, three paragraphs, education in a way was what fueled independence of the mind. And the reason why I'm saying that is it was the educated persons who were making significant move, moves, move. Yeah. It was the educated persons who were doing the powerful moves in the Caribbean. Educated persons. It, and, if you, and if you look at the fact that even, if, I don't know if you guys noticed, but like, and I was saying it to somebody today, but all of these persons, it's like all of these persons who came and make an, made an impact in the Caribbean, they all went to school and they all interacted with each other before they, they even saw themselves in the position to make that particular impact. And so if you look at the fact that the first prime minister, Trinidad, was talking to Vereen, the my friend, if you look at the fact, say, the, 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 the first chance, the first principle for Yui, all of these, the first, all of these things you're looking at, all of these creme de la creme people, they, they were educated manly. Michael Manley and Verena did for all them something there. Yeah, but very Imagine lucid. debating with the um um when at the fourth prime minister. All right, so you I see, one like say you and him are squabs and everything. They're my friend, friend. It's serious. So if you look at it, guys, you realize that education at that time was very important for us to have significant movement in the Caribbean. It is true education, we had that Caribbean identity for us to want to not be 
a part of Britain anymore. We never wanted to be attached to Britain. It was through education in which we had individuals who became conscious of the black skin and the power that was in within it. It was through education in which persons had that encouragement or that 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 zeal to protest and to resist all sorts of colonialism movement education caused that and so um you know you want to look at that that's a way in which uh, yeah, yeah 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 so that's that's one of the good things that i saw there i really saw education as a very powerful thing i saw feminism stepping out as well and then feminism branched out to revisionism because feminism in a way how we saw it in the Caribbean, let's, start with, let's talk about the Caribbean first, is that when Lucille Mathurmere, she saw the importance of women having a voice, a voice in history and a voice in society. And when I say that, I mean, I mean, if you look at it, you know, the first, one of the very first strikes to take place on the University of the West Indies campus was by who? I'm, I'm genuinely asking. Let's you mean it was it was it was with the um the Mary Seacole women um protesting for the fact that they didn't want, want to eat country. in the Irving yeah. Hall women and over something as and people might say because it was something that people there say really I really kept trying to come come show up on the dirty colors but it was a perfect place for them to show their dirty colors because what happened is that they were expected to stay silent. Niamina Irving and just settle yourself. We're ready. We are going to open the cafeteria for you. But women came together and saw the need for them to open their mouths. And well, not, not literally, but you get what I'm saying. To have that voice to say that we have had enough. You understand me? And something as simple as that rose and created such a controversy and brought such an attention to the Mary Seacole Hall that even today, even today, we're known as very empowered women. You understand me? Seacolites are known to be empowered women, even today. You understand me? So she used the whole idea of giving women the voice. So even if you realize, even simple things that she did, you know, people kind of kind of create a, a, a room for growth for feminism, you know. This lady ensured that conversations that were taking place on the Mary Seacole Hall were sensible conversations about current affairs so that women themselves will be able to express themselves Um in every different space, yeah? Not only that, but feminism branched off to, and I'm just talking, I'm just talking here. Feminism branched off to revisionism and re revisionism is basically a way in which um, a significant other reviews something that takes place in history and creates a new concept or a new idea towards it. And let me explain how you see feminism and revisionism happening. When when um Miss Mayor Lucy Mather Mayor wrote her book about rebel women and all these different articles, what she was doing when she said rebel women in slavery is that she changed the narrative that women in slavery were just silent. You understand me? They not do nothing. Then just sit and make make everybody a date. So then just did it, and that was not true. In fact, and you know I don't know why I know this. Oh yeah, I did it. I did it in my history. School. But in fact. Women were key, key individuals to many of the, 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 the rebellions and revolutions and, and slave resistance in, in the period of slavery. Women were ideal. It couldn't happen if women never did in there. At the same woman, them who listen to what happened with the white man, them will come back and tell them. You understand me? So when you hear about resistance, when you hear about re rebellions, when you hear about revolution, you hear about uh, Satan, you hear about power, you hear about Taki, you hear about all them people, but you never hear about the women, but the women were very important. And so what Lucille Mather Mayer did was create a voice for women to be equal. You understand me? Just as powerful, just as phenomenal, just as strong. And what she did is she revisited what was being said about women in slavery and she changed the concept. You understand me? <laughs> How about my grandpa? 
So it was no longer a case in which people, what it did, and then you saw the impact of that particular um, article or that particular research paper, that persons themselves stopped and they started looking at it and doing their own research and said, damn it, women actually did things when it was, when we were trying to resist slavery, it wasn't a case in which women sit down. You understand me? So people started revisiting that idea that women were not impactful or imperative to, to emancipation itself. Yeah. So that's just me talking about feminism. Anybody else? Um, all right. So we talk, these are the things that I saw. Is there anything that you guys would want me to discuss or talk about? I'm going to be very honest. I don't, um, I'm not going to say to you that I know all the themes, but if I know something, I can speak about it. Um, somebody says gender inequality. Um, you can look at gender inequality in terms of the workplace and you can start as early as um, the fact that she had to use the idea that they were sexist for her to get um, get an increase in her pay. That's a, that's a very simple one, but you can use that, right? Um, so gender inequality in its sense, wherever you see within this book, what, if you have colorism and racism separate, that's fine, Basin. Wherever you see in this book that you, and I want you to, and that's why I tell you guys, I cannot tell you the answers because you really need to read the book yourself. But wherever you see in the book, that Lucilla, where whoever is around her is being treated just differently, just because they're a woman. It's because of gender inequality. The part of the Senate. Gender politics leans also to feminism. Um, and there was something I remember when she was talking about the PNP. And you know why I like, you know why I'm, I'm zooming into that because is that the same as gender identity? No, no, it's not. Uh, it is not. But um, what was fun about, what was serious about it is that if you want to use something in terms of politics now and gender, PNP was the first political party to kind of give voice to women in Jamaica, to the Caribbean and the Caribbean to an extent, right? Um, and you, you want to look at gender politics. Everything when it comes down to gender politics would align with feminism in the book. Not the expert on that particular topic, not the person that don't want to go in depth in, 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 in debt with that topic because to be very honest, um, I'm not the expert on that topic. I mean, I don't think I'm the expert to discuss that topic in the book. Um, her father leaving, giving her a driver because on the topic of, yes, 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 yes. But didn't, yeah, and then you can talk about the fact, and then here it is. Somebody, Tiona is explaining that they didn't give credit to Mayor Lucy Matter Mayor for what she did with the PNP. So things like that, guys, is gender inequality. Um, somebody's asking about gender justice. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I would not be the best person to discuss that particular topic right now. If you check me back tomorrow, <laughs> I would be better. But no, I'm, I'm going to be very honest. Give me something else. Give me some other topic. Let's talk about another topic. Go ahead. Okay. So okay. Migration. Pardon me? Oh, oh about um, gender. It's called gender empowerment. Um, like I say, and I'm saying it again, anything that goes about gender, I don't think I would be the best person to talk about it tonight. Um, somebody is saying, um, can you Could one be again? education? Go again? Could one be education? Because yes. I was using it as my first topic. Education is but good. Like because... even, even with like a definition, because I was saying, you know, let me try to start with a definition. Um, you know, like when you say scholarly source, yeah, my only scholarly source was the dictionary. And um, even when I was using Google Scholar and uh -huh. normal Google, Bing, uh -huh. Safari, uh -huh. all of them nice is there, you would uh -huh. yahoo.com or whatever that one be. Yeah, all of them just give me the dictionary definition and the dictionary is not a scholarly source. 
So um, because of that, actually, I got right as black. Well, to be very honest, there's some dictionaries that you can use when you're doing this particular thing. Um, I think I had one. I think it was Webster. And I think Oxford, not Oxford Dictionary, but Oxford is an Oxford Dictionary. Um, and I think Webster's Dictionary. But there are some dictionaries that you can use actually to make this particular definition. Something as simple as what is education you can use um, some of these things for. Um, and I see a lot of persons talking about education. So let's go into it again. Guys, me just sit and go through education, you know? Me just sit and go through education. But let me go to Merriam Webster. There we go, Roxanne. Merriam Webster is a perfect person is a perfect, it's one of the good dictionaries to use. Um, but we just got through education. Let's talk about education again. I was saying to you guys that education is a very powerful topic because education in itself, it created that catalyst or that um, shift in drive for the Caribbean themselves. And so it is through education, we, we got leaders, we got the leaders, we got con black consciousness, we got Caribbean identity and um, education at that time was vital because we needed educated persons to make change. And the reason why I'm saying that is this, if we had relied on the uneducated and education is, Education itself is not just going to school and reading the books, because if we're going to look at that, then we would have still been um, would have still been colonized. But here's what I'm saying. It was through education in which we were able to become a Caribbean um, people, right? So we created our own identity through education, because if we had relied on the uneducated, we'd still be looking up on the, 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 we'll still be seen as a colony, honestly. We'd still see um, Britain and Europe as creme de la creme. We'd still fancy the white man and everything that they do. We'd still, um, it's honestly, it was through education we needed the leaders, the new leaders to take our Caribbean back and to create a Caribbean identity. It was through education in which we got resistance and a resistance to the white culture and so resistance to the white culture and also a creation of loving and appreciating who we are as black people it was through education we got black consciousness. Yeah. It was through education we decided to put up a fight for who we wanted to be as a Caribbean. So education is important through those days. You understand me? Um, yeah, we would still be, if it was up to education, but now like we'd still be going up, um, we'd really and truly still be going um, to over to far, um, Europe every time. Somebody just said that education is Eurocentric. Yes, which is why I'm telling you that there's more to education than just sitting in the classroom because you have the concept that you're learning the classroom, um, the ways of a Eurocentric learning, but at the same time, you're interacting with some powerful people, some very powerful people. I'm saying if you realize that at that era, all these persons who were going through education, interacting with each other, became powerful leaders and inspirations and advocacy advocates and all these persons saw the Caribbean. Look at it. No, like seriously, look at it. We get the first Trinidad Prime Minister. We get the fourth um, Prime Minister talking to her. We had Principal so you. We had all these persons out there who, because of education, created a whole new idea for what we are, or fought for a whole new idea for who we are. Mm -hmm. Education also leads to social mobility. Yes, Sebastian. Um, um, somebody had talked about family, and I was saying that family to me would have been um, a matrifocal society and a matrifocal society basically means that you know the women are always in, in charge of the things um why did they migrate to england for university um at, at that point there was not a lot of opportunities here in jamaica 
um, for tertiary education. There was not a lot. And then colonialism also fueled the, the, the idea that you had to go over there to get proper education, as well as you needed them, you needed the, 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 the motive was that when they went over there, they would become better middlemen for white people. But that's something you have to look in your own self. So let's talk about family life. Um, family for me, and this is just me, family for me was basically looking at the matrifocal society and that was caused because of male absenteeism. Um, we, I also wanted, I also looked into the idea and matrifocal society dealt with single single parents, especially single mothers, um, growing a whole family. Um, we talked about the fact that there's male absenteeism because the father is not there. Um, yeah, that's, that's that, in a nutshell, that's how I look at family. To be very, to be very fair, that's how I look at family. And so you have the information there, you know, guys, just look for the examples, just look for the examples and then make them match. Remember, we talk, I first thing we talk about, you know, All right, so somebody's talking about cultural resistance. You can look at cultural resistance, and uh, one of the beautiful ways to look at it is that um, cultural resistance facilitated revisionism in terms of, I don't think advocacy is a theme. I think it would be more either resist. You can't say advocacy because, well, you have to tell me who you see advocacy as a theme. I don't want to bash you until I know. Um, but all right, let's talk about um, cultural resistance. Let's talk about resistance of, and then we're looking at cultural resistance. And cultural resistance happened because we were becoming more appreciative of who we are as black persons, as black people, we were. And we were becoming a lot more conscious of who we are as a Caribbean people. And so we wanted to embrace that particular culture that we had here, meaning the Black culture, the Caribbean culture, and move away from colonialism or the white man's culture. And that was where resistance took place. And so it became more of a, ment it started off as a mental stance in which we decided that no more would we be following what is sent to us from England and Europe as our way of life. No more. No more. And we have examples in the book, right? We can talk about the fact as well that there was a there was a rise in Black power movement and Black consciousness because persons were now appreciating the color of their skin. I'm fine being a Black person. I deserve to get just as much opportunity as my light-skinned friend. You understand me? And then you can, somebody saying use Walter Rodney, and then you, if you want to use Walter Rodney as an example, use the fact that Walter Rodney himself pushed for the idea of appreciating the Black person and the power of your Black skin. So much was his resistance that the government themselves saw him as a threat to society, that then kicked the man out time on a country. And that itself fueled more resistance, more cultural resistance. Because what happened? We had a whole strike. One whole strike. Am I lying? Am I lying? And pan, somebody just mentioned, well, I don't, am I seeing it? Somebody mentioned pan-Africanism. And you can, you can link that to cultural resistance. You know, pan-Africanism pan actually fueled cultural resistance or resistance itself. And pan-Africanism can also fall under Caribbean identity or identity themselves. Walter Rodney was a lecturer here at the University of the West Indies, and he was someone who was moving on black consciousness, promoting the power of the black, the black man. And um, basically he was seen as a threat to society and um um buddha man name hugh shira it was hugh jlp why that's sad well jlp um with hugh shira as the no let me not use it the way the books use it the government it wasn't a case of jlp PNP, it was a government thing the government 
saw him as a threat and they, somebody said expected. <laughs> somebody said expected. Uh, Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne. But um, yeah, so they actually exiled him from Jamaica. So he was not allowed to, he was actually kicked from the country and his, and his family joined him later. Um, it started a whole strike and everything, but that's that's basically what it is. Yeah. Somebody's asking about Caribbean identity, and I'm saying, guys, let me tell you something. They say such a con such a topic like Caribbean identity, it isn't linked to one thing. It really isn't. They can look at it in terms of Pan-Africanism. They can look at it in terms of education. They can look at it in terms of culture. It is such a wide topic that it is up to you how you want to look at it. I want to lock off soon because I'm not going to lie to you. The time is really and truly passing. I'm looking at doing some um, a little bit of session so we can go through some essays tomorrow during club time. Um, but yeah um politics well <laughs> politics itself anika wasn't necessarily just talking about politics itself wasn't just out there in its way meaning you just you would have just see politics yes or what politics is a politics yes or, but more so you would be talking when you talk about politics and talk about the power of pnp and creating a voice for women you can talk about the the power of government um how government themselves um how would i say this how government themselves um lessened the voice of the people um you can talk about the fact that there was political resistance you know in which we decided that we're not going to be governed by um um europe anymore you can talk about politics in terms of looking at the fact that um that's on the tip of my tongue and i lost it and this that was a good one but yeah that's, 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 politics isn't a one man thing. It's, it was, it isn't just written there. Politics itself is such a broad topic that it's up to you how you want to look at it. We just did Caribbean identity, Leanne. We just did Caribbean identity, Leanne. And I was talking about the fact that it's also a broad topic and can look at the fact that you have, um, oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Um, you can look at the fact that you have, um, Caribbean identity in terms of our culture, Caribbean identity in terms of education, Caribbean identity in terms of Pan-Africanism. There's so much um, that you can look at for um, Caribbean identity. Club, club time is two to five. I have a session at two to, to four, so four to five, I'll create an next link and send in the WhatsApp group. We can run through some things. I, I normally give my number out so you can message me and send me your drafts and my email. This time, I'm going to just give you my number after seven. Mm, after hmm. yeah, I'm gonna have a cutoff time tomorrow. So what happens is that after cutoff time, we can't go do no more. I'm a school student just as you, and honestly, last year I read over 300 book reports. I don't know how we find the time, but honestly, after I'm gonna say after six. So after six, that's it. Let me type my number in the YouTube chat. And then that's it. Um, oh, reference, 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 reference. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, Hold on. Three, two, six, two, five, four, one. That's my number. Three, two, six, two, five, four, one. Eight, seven, six, three, two, six, two, five, four, one. Please, I beg you. May I have a next number? It's my it's my life number. Honestly, if you text me on that one, it's gonna I don't know how you're going to reply. But um there we go. <laughs> um um where was I? Reference. Sorry, can you do me a favor? Can you scroll down? Can you scroll down so I can see the top of the list, please? Because I'm only seeing cultural diversity. At um, the top. There's way more than these, you know, guys. These are just some things that I, I just jotted down there's way much more um you know three two six two five four one that's my number um yes guys reference the reference is actually the easiest part i would recommend using apa i can do an apa format and show you right now as a matter of fact i think i have one here um let me show you let me show you let me show you no no miss he they, they specifically said to use the mla style oh 
Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I hate that. Me hate MLA, me hate MLA, me hate MLA so tail, so tail. But guess what? Same. I was hoping that it was the a APA style because that's the one that I'm fluent in, but it's not. I'm going to create an example, send it in the group chat um tomorrow, and you can share it with your classmates, please. But apart from it kind of mm, it's just hard. It's just hard and unnecessary. But basically you use numbers. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not me, 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 not my stress. Can't do it. Me want to go do it, but cannot do it here right now. I can send you though. I honestly am willing to send you one in the in the group in the group chat um by tomorrow. But I don't know um if if I can tell you no. Um, go ahead. Questions mm -hmm. now. Go How ahead. do we cite the book? Like when we're using our examples, do we? Well, all right. When I was using, well, what we've done over the years, over the semester, is that when we spoke about a particular part, we'd just write what we're talking and then we put in brackets, um, chapter one, page two, or something like that. That's how we did it. Um, that's how we did it. Um, I don't know if they changed it, especially because they're doing an MLA format, but that's how we did it. Yeah, let me show you guys what we had done. I can probably this is how we did it last year. You see it? So this was us doing Stuart. This was me writing a paragraph um for Stuart Hall. So the first thing highlighted in Stuart Hall by Annie Paul was classism. According to Wright, and that's how I did it. That's how we cited it. So we just did the um this is it, yeah. According to Wright 2001, and we defined what classism is, and then we cited that we made a source, we made a site here, we cited the source, Wright 2001. Then we, this is how we did it, um, my friend. Classism can be seen in chapter one, page 20, where Jesse and I wrote about it. Yeah, so this is how we did a paragraph, you know. This is how we did a, um, the, so this right now, this was a makeup paragraph that we ran through when we did our session last, um, last year you see it mm -hmm. nice you see you see how much page you take up yeah that's why i'm telling that this is a paragraph in its own way you see how much that one decent amount about a half a page and um also let me just run it through um this was our introduction too so if you see it you see it so that was our introduction for last year when we were doing our own session we did it together but we don't have the time to do it um no i didn't have any footnotes but this is what we did we did the book this report this book report provides a summary of Stuart hall by annie paul then we talked about who Stuart wall was you see me write all of this yeah this was all we needed to write about Stuart hall then we wrote about the fact that this so this is us let me just run it through this book provides a report and we write what the book the, who Stuart Hall was. All of this are who Stuart Hall was, right? After that, we went ahead and we talked about who the author was, who was Annie Paul. You see, Annie Paul is the head of communication and publications. Um, yeah, and after we wrote about who she was, we then talked about the fact that the book is a part of the Caribbean biography series. Please put that in an essay. Look nice when they know, so they know so it's a part of the Caribbean biography series, but I'll send it, the, the um, I'll type it in the chat. Um, and that's it, see? And this is how we did it. This was our thesis statement. From strong assessment of the book, it is believed that Caribbean history and revisionism is seen in Annie Paul's book through the themes such as, and we listed our themes. That was it, guys. That was it for us. That was our essay. And then we went into the body of the report and we did our thing. So like I said, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not hard. It is not hard. It seemed hard. I'm not going to lie to you, but it isn't. And like I said, I left my number there. If you have information, please reach out to me. If, Do. You want to review like how you conclude? Um, let me see if I have mine. Hold on. How I conclude? How I concluded? How did I conclude? So you talk like the relevance of the book or something, or if you'd recommend yeah, it. Then. Um, hold on. Because that's where I'm stuck at. <laughs> I'm trying to find. Um... 
I'm trying to find um I I wanted to find mine too. Somebody said <laughs> why didn't I reach out to you earlier? Um because and I'm gonna be very honest about it. Had I done that, you would have never anything that I said tonight, you'd have never um you'd have never retained, to be very honest. Had I reached out, had we done this a week before, you would have not even remember not what we do. And we'd be, we'd be in the situation that we were in earlier. No joke. So there's a reason why I do it a day or two before the actual um, deadline. Because guess what? If me do it anytime earlier, nobody, na, me, me I tell you no. So nobody now go pay attention. Or now go forget to me if you do it. When I go cause like mm, mm, you know have to have that's something that is very it's when you're forced to open your mind is when we actually um that's when we actually do the work <laughs> when we're forced to do the work so because time is now dwindling down on us we have no choice but to do the work um this was mine you listen to me um the young lady who had asked me about to, conclusion. Yeah, yeah, this was my, I'm gonna, let me see if I can share the screen again. So stop share and then share. All right, so this was mine. This was how I ended mine. In my opinion, Judy Raymond did an excellent job in highlighting these themes and issues. The book was well researched and included many scholars' views on Burr McBurney's life and contribution to the Caribbean cultures and movement. Raymond's book allowed me to relate the topic starting class. A shortcoming to me, however, was that though the book spoke about um, Burr's contribution to the Caribbean culture, it did give a mood of constant failures by Burr, but I believe that majority of what she did was in fact successful, but wasn't appreciated by many. I, for one, also wished more external information was available on Matt Bernie so I could get a broader um, understanding. Regardless, the structure and style of the book was commendable. I fully enjoyed reading Burr Matt Bernie by Julie Raymond as this book reveals a new aspect and understanding to a new aspect of our Caribbean culture and civilization. Then they need to send me double type. And that was it, guys. <laughs> that was my conclusion First and my first everything fitting at that. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but I don't see where the thesis was restated. Or... No, I have to put back the thesis. Oh, and it, I didn't say that you know, I said you could revisit the themes, but I never say you have to put back the thesis. Yeah, not the thesis itself, but yeah, revisit the All I did in mind was just say, in my opinion, she did an excellent job in highlighting these themes, the themes that I talk about. That was it. So I didn't go back into depth with my themes. You know, all I did was just say she did a good job. Because this is where my personal opinion comes in. And if I realize I didn't just give her, I told them that they failed because she there was a too many. See me put it here so you know me tell you enough to be very honest when I think about the book. So if you never like them, just me like it. So simply say, and I said, I said to them that it gave a mood of constant failures. And then I went on to say that I wish that there was more external information out there on this woman because I did if it up to the book alone, I could not understand. So it's okay for you to critique the book, you know. It is okay for you to say to them that you're not feeling the book because you're just not feeling the book. You don't have to be nice. <laughs> yeah, you're not nice. You're not nice, to be honest. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, well, one more quick question, though. Um, I put up my hand earlier when you mentioned it, but you missed it. Um, when you were saying that resistance led to like um the demonstration, wasn't wouldn't the demonstrations by themselves be resistance? All right, I get what you're saying. So cultural resistance, and you're saying that instead of saying led to demonstrations say that we could see cultural resistance in the many demonstrations that happened. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. what phrase my yeah, resistance in the demonstration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody is saying, what's the difference between social and historical context? Um, well, you can, all right. For me, I look at social context by talking about what's happening now 
And well, like I match something that's happening now. So I can say, for example, male absenteeism is still happening now. And I can talk about the society that we live in. Historical context, I would say that it, I would, it's either if I'm talking about something about slavery or I'm talking about something about emancipation, you know, back in other days. That's how I do it differently. That's how I do it. That's how I do it. You're not asking. What quotation marks work also if you, if you, if you want to. Yeah, 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 it, it works also. All right, guys. Like I said, the teacher cannot give you zero for you to be honest, but it's good. For, but if you're going to say that you don't, you don't see, you didn't see the need for the book, you have to come with the same way, then come with you with social and historical and other that you need to look at. about that right so yeah mm -hmm. that's it i think that's it for us guys um somebody just asked a question they had asked me to talk about migration guys listen up guys i'm not going to watch back your video now but migration deals with the fact that um you can talk about the effects of migration you can talk about the fact that um you know we had world war ii and i think world war ii caused a lot of migration as well you can talk about the fact that um many of the fathers migrated um to work overseas or to do something like anything like that which caused some electricism etc etc but yeah i don't think i can guys yeah, I we that somebody said anime. <laughs> somebody said, look at it. <laughs> hello, hello. I have to go to my my. I have to go. Yeah, it is the best. It is the best. It is the best. It is, yes, that's my ringtone. La -di -da -di -da. That's my ringtone. But yes, right, guys, Miss, that thank is you it. so much. Um, um, I just wanted to ask one very quick thing. You said something about club time. <laughs> what is that exactly? Well, um, I'm not sure. Are you under the Faculty of Social Sciences? No. What faculty are you under? Law. Mm. That's okay. Um, the Faculty of Social Sciences students would probably know this, but between the hours of two to five every Wednesday, every single Wednesday, no classes are held in that time. That time is dedicated only to clubs and societies at the University of the West Indies. So it can be a church club or church society because we do have those. It can be a club for law because law have MLS. It can be a club for humanity, hum, um, human resources. It can be UN. It can be key club. It can be interact. We have we have, we have so many clubs. I think we have over 90 clubs here at the University of the West Indies. And so what we do is that we create a time frame in which no classes are held and it is dedicated to students only going to clubs and societies here at the University of the West Indies. So clubs can only meet on Thursdays between the hours two to five because it, that is the allotted times. Mishka, if you have, somebody said them have class, that's not, no, you don't have a class on Thursdays. Nobody on the University of the West Indies have classes on Thursdays two to five. So that time is solely reserved for clubs and societies. The Faculty of Social Sciences, we did um, a club fusion in which we talked about all the clubs that were under our faculty. Um, as a faculty rep, I can say that quite a few of the students are now registered under clubs. And I think they were supposed to have a big club fusion. I think it's still going to happen. I I don't know. If you want, you can look at our page at uimona underscore FSS to see the clubs under the Faculty of Social Sciences. I cannot speak for the other faculties, but I do know of those clubs. You don't have to be on, you don't have to be in a particular faculty to be a part of a faculty club. It's just that those are under the faculty club. Yeah. It's six. It's six. Right. Six Thank is you. my cutoff time. I'll go to 6.30. Yeah. So yeah, guys, if you're not a part of a club, I would encourage you do so. Um, don't join and leave UWE and don't be a part of a club. You might think that UWE create links, but clubs create more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we that. Is that all for questions? Are we good? Do we feel as if we, I'm not gonna say if we feel as if we can do it all, no, but do we feel like we can at least try to tackle 
the book report no okay i guess my last thing is that um i wanted to to know if it was and i don't know if it's um me, maybe adding too much if i can add um situations or um things that not not necessarily impact um the, the caribbean but impact um people of the diaspora so I would probably say maybe the, you know, yes. African-Americans or, yes. you know, people in, you know, Blacks in um, France, you know, you, Europe, France, things like they that. they are from the Caribbean and over. What, all right, the thing is, you, you can link it to them. You can talk about, it doesn't have to be Caribbean. I'm sweaty. That's why you see me It doesn't have to be Caribbean. It can actually be me. And when I say that, hello, what I mean is that. You can pro you still have to link it to some sort of Caribbean society, but if you see something happening, Lex and I and I can use the Black Lives Matter for a good example. If you realize that it's happening in the United States, you can talk about it, but still you have to come back to talk about something that's happening in the Caribbean. You still have to make a relation to Caribbean um, society, but it's okay for you to reach out if it's members of the Caribbean diaspora over somewhere in France or so. It's still the Caribbean, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Anything that has to do with the Caribbean in a linkage somewhere, somewhere, somehow, it, as long as yeah. It, yeah, it ties in with our previous lectures and with the, with the book somehow. Exactly. Okay. Once it does that, once it does that, you're fine. Um, send your reports via WhatsApp. You please, the number let me give you a WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp, it, WhatsApp, it. But I cut off at six and that's it. Like, that is it. And I remember that the fact that I'm giving this out to over 400 persons means that there's a possibility that I'm going to get a lot. So if you feel like me not reach out to you, nobody stress, nobody say like double text, triple text, guys. Everybody have to get them chance if they can't get them chance. Yeah, six, six, six thirty. 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, guys. So guess what? We're logging off. I want to thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, I hope that next semester or even next year, you are in a position to help others too. Yes, Miss Harvey? Missy, no long me day here at talk. Oh, man, me talk for you just, just joining up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Anyway, Miss, could you send us um the sample that you showed a while ago about the Stuart Hall? Or you cannot? You can send me the yeah, Stuart Hall one. I I can send you the story now and I can send you my own. Um, what's up me? What's up? Let me put the number in this chat as well. Um, I can, as a matter of fact, I'll send, I'll send it in the group. So it's the one that we did for Sword Hall, the information there is, is, some of them is just us making up information to show them the structure, but I can absolutely send it. Um, also, I can edit the one that I have on Lucy Matthew Mayor and send it to, and I can send you a copy of mine from last six semesters ago. So guess what? A lot of information probably changed. Yeah, why me keep on leaning me head in the camera? That's why you can you tell me look like me. I do all sort of art. But um, yes, guys, um, like I said, I hope that, listen, it happened to everybody. Just make sure you're doing a book report. If you can't get an A, just try to get one you can get. Um, yeah. Aww. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys be safe. Please do the book report. Do not allow it to be a case in which you don't do the book report because you feel stressed out. Do if I even write something, write something. May I beg you? Yeah. And we're good to go. So take care. Um, all the best, guys. All the best on your book report. And this is this is just the beginning, you know, but brighter days ahead. So bye guys. Be safe. Take care. Bye. Bye, Miss. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I know my mic plan to work with you some more. I'm so sorry, Nastasia. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sorry. Miss, Miss you may mention to a group. What group are you referring to? When Which you say go send, you send the documents to the group. Oh, you're not in the CARBSIF group, Miss Daly? No, Miss. The classmates, them not real to you. You know what I'm Tell them. You know, there's, se it. there's several Carib um, Sid groups. You know, every tutor has their own um, WhatsApp group. 
Oh. So it's not one big, it's not one big carob soup. So each depends on what day your tutor teaches. You have your, you have that specific um, carob group. Oh, oh, I get, yeah, I get, yeah, I get, yeah, I get. It's depending, depending on the campus as well. Yeah, that too, yeah, exactly that too. All right, then, so it could uh, be, could be anybody, anywhere. You know, I'm telling something. Yes, last year somebody bullied me last year. Somebody bullied last year. All right, guys, let me send you my number, um, ladies, because if you're not in the group. Then you can't just pray. Let me just send the group. Let me send the number in the group. Oh, hello, guys. I'm not going to lie to the people on YouTube. I'm not know if you end the live stream, you know. So if you don't see me here, I'm not know if you end the live stream. You're here. I'm waiting for... Um, I saw I saw, I saw you guys out. Um, let me send my number. 876-326. Sorry, what's... 876. Yes, on 326. Uh-huh. Hold on. 2541. 876 326 2541. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. That's it. I, all right. I just um I just um WhatsApp you. If you yeah. can send it, if you can send it to me, I will put it in my Carib Save group. Okay, no problem. Um, like I say, somebody saying please save the recording. <laughs> um, what my friend name? Rashana. Rashana, what's up? They said, please save the recording. Guys, the recording will be on YouTube, the same YouTube um, link that you have. So you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're here. All right, guys. So um, I'm going to end the live. I'm going to try to. I don't know how, but I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to end the meeting. So bear with me. I'm trying to, let me just, I'm trying to message someone to see if I can. Um, I don't know how. All right, then. You must be away. Oh, so 